Hello, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Today, five minutes with Rioja. Um, five things you need to know about Rioja. First of all, where it is. Um, if you know your, uh, your French border, travel down the French border. When you hit the Spanish border, carry on going for about another 100 kilometres, and it's there. It, it goes about 100 kilometres uh, east to west, and maybe 40 kilometres north to south. Uh, wines they produce there, they do a bit of rosé, they do a bit of white, but 85% of it is red. Grapes, um, well, the main one is Tempranillo, uh, and t it really dominates the red wine production, and I think, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, uh, typically, ooh, I don't know, 80 to 90% of, mo of most wines here will, would be Tempranillo, and there are some that are 100% Tempranillo. Uh, if it's not 100%, supporting cast would be things like Grenache, or Garnache as it is here, Carignan, or Mazuelo as it's known here, and there's another one that's quite wild and fragrant called the Graciano. Um, traditionally, Rioja has been classified according to the way in which the wines have been aged, and maybe we'll talk about that when, when we taste these three wines. Uh, but now uh, you're moving to, towards uh, people who are saying, right, well, okay, maybe we shouldn't look at it as a, uh, in that way. Uh, so it, I suppose we're looking at it, uh, judging a wine by how it's been aged is almost like uh, judging a dish according to how long it's been cooked doesn't quite work. So um, whereas uh, traditionally the wines have been blended from the hotter and cooler bits of, uh, of, of the region, the cooler bits being the one, cooler wetter bits being the one closer to the coast in the northwest, the warmer drier ones being uh, further inland in, in the southeast. Um, and uh, uh, now what you're finding is there are people thinking, actually I've got a pretty good vineyard here, I don't want to blend anything in, let's just produce a single vineyard wine. But the wines I've got here today are all blends, and uh, I, uh, from, uh, uh, come all from the same company, a company called Cune. And uh, we have got, uh, the first one is called Criantha. Now for, uh, so this is the Vigna Real 2009 Criantha. Uh, for Criantha, uh, the wines have to have spent uh, at least uh, 12 months in barrel, and you can sell them in the third year after the harvest. Lovely, fresh, juicy. Um, it's got that tigger-like bounce to its fruit, so it's got some slight softening of vanilla and maybe a touch of coconut from the uh, the time it's spent in oak. Uh, but in general, this is lovely, round, wild strawberry, raspberry, loganberry, and a touch of orange peel fruit that's uh, uh, that's carrying it. You could almost chill that slightly in summer. Um, good for upmarket picnics. Wouldn't mind that at all. Next one I've got is the uh, same company, again, the Cune and the Vigna Real Oro uh, Reserva 2005. So a Reserva wine has to have spent, um, uh, as with the Criantha, it's got to have spent 12 months in barrel, but it's got to, it, you have to sell it, you, you have to wait another year before you sell it. So uh, sold in the, from the fourth year after the harvest onwards. Let's try this. There's a sweet, supple spice there. Um, this lovely oak sheen, and oak is in the background just letting the fruit, pushing the fruit towards the centre stage, but um, not being afraid to be seen. I think uh, Rioja, without that little bit of oak, um, sometimes it, it, you can do it and it can be, it can be tasty, but um, it, 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 for me, it adds to the party. And uh, so there's this warmth, uh, and just when you think the fruit is just on that little bit, ever is it just too overripe? No, it's not. There's this freshness that comes in on the finish, leaving your mouth satisfied, entertained, and wanting more. So I will have some more. We like that. Final one, Gran Reserva. So Gran Reserva um, has to have had a minimum of two years in barrel, and um, a further three years in bottle before you sell it. And uh, so let, this is the same vintage as the, as the Reserva. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, I'd love to have that in one of those big Riedel Burgundy glasses. And just uh, one of those wines that you can just stir and stir and keep sniffing. And each time you come back to it, there's a little bit more coming out. So yes, there's the berries, there's the plums, there's this warm Spanish dustiness, there's a vanilla, there's a bit of cloves in there. There's a spiciness, uh, and then there's this uh, this orange peel uh, freshness that, uh, that, that that keeps the finish beautifully uh, beautifully alive. Some Grand Reservers um, they put an inferior wine into a barrel, and if you put a into a barrel for two years, it just emerges in scrawny fashion. Here it's emerged vigorous, um, manly wine. Can I say manly? I just did. Um, but uh, yes, it, it, it's just got it, it's got this wonderful slightly wild, rustic um, vigour to it and um, makes me want to go out and get some uh, 
Not sure. Well, maybe maybe I'll, I'd categorise the uh, the three wines according to what I'd want to uh, eat with them. First one, probably a upmarket picnic, so bring out maybe a little bit of charcuterie. Uh, next one, uh, maybe on the steak side, maybe some ribeye. Here, I'd want uh, like a, a, a long, slow-cooked dish, um, or one of those, uh, a suckling lamb. I'm, I'm not supposed to like suckling lamb, but I do, and I do like these wines. Hopefully, you've learned a lot about Rioja, um, and hopefully, I've managed to get it into five minutes. If I haven't, I'll speed it up. No, I won't speed it up, but um, see you soon.